One of the applications of this theory, the modern theory, is that we are able to uh, to formulate uh, weak formulations like this, and we are able to um, compute um, uh, the solutions by using by replacing this uh, large space by a finite element space, and this is done by using uh, software like ANSYS. ANSYS is a uh, program which uh, the students uh, may use at uh, Narvik University College, for example. We Let us now give an example where we use this. This video is translated directly from a Norwegian, um, uh, Norwegian video, so I'm just trying to translate this simultaneously. Um, here is the problem we are going to consider. We have a temperature here on the right hand side which is equal to zero and, and on the right uh, hand side the temperature is equal to one. The, the um, the problem is to find the temperature distribution in the wall. We have two different materials, white and black material. It's one in the white material and it's ten in the black material. The radius is, uh, the diameter is equal to 0 0.7 and the uh, distance between between um, uh, these uh, these holes are equal to one for simplicity we are now going to use ANSYS the program ANSYS to solve this problem and we are only considering one of these squares because we uh, are assuming Neumann boundary conditions on the top and the bottom uh, and uh, the bottom. Um, well, now we have started ANSYS. We start to define the, uh, that we are considering a thermal problem. This is in some sense defining what type of partial differential equation we are considering. There are many other types of uh, differential equations um, other type of uh, physical problems which can be described uh, described by other partial differential equations um, uh, and it's possible to solve all these types of problems in ANSYS. Magnetic problem for example, electric problem um, the first we do um, is uh, then to define that we are using a thermal problem. Then we go and define what what type of basis functions uh, we are going to use. We are going to choose um, a special type of basis function called eight node uh, eight node uh, basis functions. That is um, uh, have in each element eight nodes and the temperature is uh, going to be calculated in all these eight points. So we do not use triangles as we did in our simple example which we have shown you earlier. We now define that uh, we are going to use an isotropic material and we specify uh, the material number um, on the material 1 and give the temperature in this area. So the conductivity is uh, it was uh, 10, we remember that. We can also define other type of properties of this material, but we don't need this for for this thermal problem. 
So then all we specify the material number two. And remember that the conductivity in this uh, material was supposed to be one in this white region. No, we are giving the geometry of the problem. So we start with uh, this square. Um, it's going to be from minus um, uh, 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 uh, in both uh, x direction and y direction. Well, let's take a little bit time here. I wrote some uh, little error. Um, no, it's right. So I do the same in the y direction. Now we see that uh, this will define a square which has uh, uh, length 1 in the x direction and 1 in the y direction. Now we turn to the definition of the circle inside. We have a diameter on 0 0.7, so we have a radius on 0 0.35, and the center is uh, defined as, uh, as origin. What I'm doing now is just to um, to define what is material 1 and what is material 2. So I have to subtract uh, this material uh, from the, the, the square so that um, we get two uh, materials, this black material and this blue material. Okay, so now this is done, and now I define the mesh size, mesh size uh, of the elements. So this is the length of um, of the largest uh, side of each element. We do not use square elements; we use elements with four sides, since we are using second-order polynomials, which um, turns out to be good uh, choice when you are using uh, such polynomials. So now we start by meshing the, um, the region 1 first. Here this process uh, is finished. So now we have uh, now we have meshed all this material and defined the basis functions inside this circle. And now we are doing the same with the uh, other material, the material around this. So now we have meshed both these um, these two materials. Now we have, in some sense, defined the the uh, function space, the finite dimensional function space. Space we have four uh, four sides of each element. So this is just because we are using, not using uh, linear element elements, but uh, second order elements. We could have used uh, any type of polynomial, po polynomials, but then it would be more likely to use other types of elements as well. 
that's other type of triangulation. Um, now we turn to the definition of the boundary conditions. Um, on the left boundary, we know as, uh, define that uh, the temperature should be zero. So that's what I'm being uh, are working with now. So here I define the temperature zero on the um, the left boundary. And we do the same on the uh, on the right hand side, but here we define the temperature to be equal to one. Uh, the boundary conditions on the uh, top and the bottom uh, is assumed to be a Neumann, but a Neumann condition, as I told you. However, ANSYS would immediately understand um, uh, that we are using a Neumann uh, condition if we do not uh, give any information about the boundary. So we don't need to give any information here. Now we are able to solve the problem. Now we, we compute all the elements in the stiffness matrix and solve the problem. So here we we um, now uh, illustrate. We are now trying to to show the illustration of uh, the solution. And uh, here we we tell ANSYS to illustrate the temperature distribution all over the the, the problem, all over the region. So here you see the the temperature distribution. The blue is the uh, is um, the lowest value closest to zero and the red uh, part is uh, with highest temperature close to one. So recall that it was zero on the left hand side and one on the right hand side. So we can uh, now use these uh, uh, colors to uh, see, get a picture of the temperature. We can also uh, illustrate, uh, for example, the gradient uh, gradient in x direction, for example. Let's do that. Here we see it. We can also uh, illustrate the gradient in the y direction. Uh, moreover, we can do m many other operations. We can find the the energy in the uh, whole region. Here we here we see the energy density uh, in each element, and we can integrate by uh, by using um, integration methods, uh, which is implemented in ANSYS to find the uh, the total energy uh, in in the whole region.